Are there any similarities in the backgrounds of the students who come to you suffering from anxiety? In my experience, what I have seen is that anxiety is a condition that is experienced across the board, that there's no particular group or groups of people that suffer from it because the causes and the, or the symptoms of such um, are so universal, um, everyone can experience it. Um, there is genetic and biochemical um, connections to it, but most of the time it's a event-related condition, be, be it something that's happened in their world. So what I've found is that anxiety is across the board. There's no particular group that presents a lot more um, so yeah, it's pretty universal in its approach. What we see is that the student doesn't achieve as well as they could. That's a long-term result. In the classroom, teachers may notice that a student becomes very withdrawn and very quiet. They may find that a student is avoiding coming to school or coming to class. They may find that assignments don't get handled in long time. Uh, in some cases, they may find that a student um, leaves the classroom. Sometimes they may, may be displays of anger. But often uh, anxiety is more something that's turned inwards rather than turned out, but not, not always so. So you'll see some um, indicators maybe in the classroom that you might not understand. The teacher may not uh, understand what's underneath the behaviour, but it could well be that there is some anxiety and severe stress about some issues. As a chaplain, how do you support these people who come to you suffering from anxiety? My role here at the school is um, what they call a pastoral care program, so how I plug it to the kids is that I am a big sister to, to them that they can come and access in their time at school. So when a student presents and um, I'm just noticing that they're, they're struggling a little bit with this anxiety, I just sit and listen to what they're experiencing and perhaps the background is to, into why they're experiencing the, uh, the condition. Uh, so sit and spend a lot of time just hearing their story and just getting a really good insight into their world and the people in it, the significant players in it. And then once getting an understanding of that, I have the ability to then refer them on to uh, particular agencies both outside of the school in the local community but also other staff in the school that can help with their specific issue and just get them that really specialised support that they need um, when they're navigating that journey. Uh, what are the most common triggers for anxiety? Well, basically, um, the, the triggers can be stressful events that may have happened in life, and that can be something that's going on at school, in the classroom. It could be an academic stress. It could be a family stress. Uh, it could be a relationship stress. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be that a student's got a personality type that makes them more susceptible to stress as well. It could be that there's some ongoing illnesses uh, going on for the, for the student or it could be a family member as well. There could have been you know, a stressful event like a death or a, a family separation that has caused them a lot of uh, anxiety. So a family predisposition is also um, something that can be um, uh, not uncommon. But um, basically any of those things, but I suppose the most common one at schools would be stressful life events. Do we need to raise awareness about anxiety? Certainly, because we know that it is quite a common issue for a lot of Australians. Um, I saw a statistic on the uh, Beyond Blue website, which we would encourage um, people to access, that one in four um, people uh, in a lifetime will have some sort of anxiety experience disorder. So that's quite a common um, statistic. So we need to kind of destigmatise the issue of mental health generally, and you know it's Mental Health Week this week, we are today highlighting anxiety in particular, so we need to encourage students to see this as something that's not a sign of weakness, that is part of a life journey that can occur to any of us at any time, and that we need to talk, seek help, and that there is a very good chance of a good outcome at the end. I'm impressed with the level of publicity that we are seeing of late. Um, there's a lot of ad campaigns that I've seen just in recent times um, where both uh, national, like Australian uh, 
celebrities and international celebrities are really getting on board and endorsing programs like uh, Are You OK O Day, um, there's Headspace, there's Reach Out, there's Youth Beyond Blue. So there's, um, there's a big profile that's going but I guess the fact that we're seeing more students dealing with it, we can't just stop at that, we need to continue to get that word out. So there's always opportunity for, for more profile, for more publicity, for more promotion of, of what anxiety is and how one person can navigate it. Well, what are some steps that people can take in the general public if they feel that they are suffering from anxiety themselves? Yeah, there's uh, excellent websites out there that uh, initially a student may refer to because they have um, assessment tools that allow you to make a decision about whether you need to go to a GP, go to uh, another health professional. We also have a very good place called Headspace in Brisbane at Munda that's got resources that can put, support students in lots of ways. Um, a lot of health professionals there, central link offices and so on. So we certainly would give those um, suggestions to students. But we'd work with a student when they came to see us and um, maybe map out a plan of the best way to support them which may be referring on to uh, another health professional. First thing that I would really encourage people to do is realise that they're not alone in this. I mean, one in 25 young people have got an experience of anxiety within a 12 month period. So they're not alone in this and I guess the first thing is for them to realise that there are people out there that can help and I would encourage them to go and see their doctor or their GP and talk with them about their, their options but also there's a variety of online resources now that they can access to also give them further insight and strategies as to little tips and hints of what they can do in their everyday world. Um, that can help with, with the anxiety levels. So um, first port of call is go on and ask someone for help because there are people out there who want to help and have the ability to help them.